Hiya, it's uh, Neil from Tights TV. Today I've got Dan on, uh, Knott's Forest. Uh, going to have a bit of a, a chat and uh, debate and that, because obviously we're going to be about as next opponents we are. Game being called off against Stoke City. So, Dan, it's great to have you on Tights TV, mate. Ah, thank you for having me on. Um, I mean, hopefully things will go ahead as normal. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's... On Monday, uh, three o'clock kickoff. It's also going to be on Sky TV as well, that light. But uh, there's going to be a fair few going down. Uh, ready for the game. Uh, under the season, then, how's it been going? Because it wasn't that long ago, a couple of months ago, you were down at bottom, and then Steve Cooper's coming and proper change it around for you, mate. Oh, it started the season. I mean, if you ask me after the Middlesbrough game when Hooton came in, uh, when Hooton left, man. Mm-hmm. Um, if we be where we are now, I mean, I'd probably be laughing at you and play slap the hand. I mean, our Cooper just came in and with the same squad as well. I mean, we think mm-hmm. about it, not even had a transfer window. I mean, for him to come in and to revolutionise the squad and just brought that um, sort of like fan base back, which it was gone under Hooton completely. I mean, to be, to be where we are now, it's magnificent to be fair. I mean... Mm-hmm. It just got this play in, it's just brought that sort of like different tactical side, which Hooton didn't have. I mean, Cooper got plan A, plan B, well, he got 80 cent there north, and he just we just looked like a different team. Hmm. It's like us as well, because obviously it won't go in uh, well under shop and we brought Poyer in. But uh, I know it's like it's made it a bit firmer at, at back, but it's not had an impact uh, as such as like such as yourselves, like you said. Uh, Steve Cooper's come in, took it with grasp at neck, and although I had a transfer window, is managed to get you know see some different players and uh, adjust it, and uh, it's benefiting you. Uh, under under Chris Hilton, then what football were it a, were it a decent way of football they were trying to play, or were it not suited for what were it was for Notts Forest? Uh, it weren't really suited for uh, the players we had. I mean, we have got quite a lot of like players that can play football and we had a lot of pace with Martin and Johnson and mm. Lolly can play. I mean, but we just weren't doing it enough. Like we we're quite deep defensively or like if we went one nil up, we tried to sit on one nil. Or like if and it was just like even if we went one nil down, it were like we tried not to concede too much. But then even if we was losing, we weren't changing it up mm. as much as how um Cooper is now. I mean it was just really defensive and we were all in our off now for of like just have no thing of going forward. Mm. I mean, it, it's something I, I like with Cooper is what he did at Swansea as well. He seems to come in and he's got his own mindset, he's a pretty strong will character, what I what I can see in him, and he knows what he wants to achieve and he, he just goes out and does it. Well, when Chris Hilton obviously got uh went from Knott's Forest, what well, was Steve Cooper one of the names that you were interested in? Were there any other managers that you would like to have seen there? To be honest, yeah. It was one of them ones where I quite like Cooper. I mean, Wadi was in the one in. Hmm. Um, obviously, obviously with Dave Murphy as well, obviously you guys know Murphy from being at Barcy. Yeah. Yeah. How he works, it's like, you might just need someone where came from European side. Yeah. But yeah, I would have wanted to be anyway to be fair to how of how we got Trans playing. Uh, was just I was surprised that we got him, especially where, where we were and after the start we had. I mean, for he was probably the one I wanted. Mm. That's decent, but I mean, like I said, Dave Murphy obviously had links with Barnsley and he would our CEO and it were down to Dave Murphy but what had like links back at MLS. And he brought in like Daryl DK helped uh, broker that deal in. So, um, it, like I say, he's got knowledge for you. Uh, he's seen it as a bigger challenge. So, obviously, he left us and went to such as yourself. Um, and it looks like he's got that ideal partnership via with, with Steve Cooper at the minute. So, going on to uh, fixture then, obviously, we're going to be coming down to your place on Monday. Um, with formation, obviously, we saw a bit from when people who didn't watch it. Uh, Mots first were on Sky uh, last night. Um, is there any players that we should be particularly looking out for, or any players that you think have really excelled this season? Is anybody stand out for you this season? There's 
couple to have I mean, Jed Spence, obviously, under Warner, it was very much not favoured. Mm. I mean, a lot of Middlesbrough fans saying that, oh, just buying him and he won't do well for it, for you. But since his journey, it's just been like a revelation that right back, it was like, it's like having Matty Cash again. I mean, going forward, it's like really, really positive. The only thing I'd probably disagree with him is, is don't cross when you need to cross. He tried to do the little bit fancy stuff, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, obviously, Brendan Johnson, I mean, start of the season he had, they were brilliant. I mean, he just started really well. But the last couple of games, he started to like, die off. And I mean, even when we played all the sport, he should have scored really. I mean, it were open goals. So, um, um, obviously, St. Canard had been a re- revelation. I mean, he's quite good. He campaigned, win, pe- campaigned that number 10 role. Mm. And obviously, Lewis Grabbing has. We all know he's goal scoring this year, so and he's already beaten last season goal tally already, which for him to only score a couple of goals last season, mm. just really, really poor. So for him to hit double figures already, it's really, really positive. And it's going to build his confidence, some of it we are lacking at the minute. Uh, obviously, we, we, we are 23rd in the league. Um, when I've, I've been playing, uh, obviously, our manager's come in, he's tried changing it. It's, it's, Gone for like a four at back kind of thing now, but we're pretty weak in midfield. Um, and the goals that were, you know, what we <laughs> conceded overnight against Blackburn, it were all through individual errors in midfield. And um, the worrying thing for me was that as soon as the player had lost the ball, they weren't tracking back. And I'd, I'd, for me as a player, I, I, as a fan, I want to see my player fail those ball to chase it back. Uh, so I'm hoping to address that on, um, on Monday. For me, for Barnes players, what will stand out for me? I mean, obviously, Brad Collins has been having, you know, a decent game uh, for the last few months. Like, uh, LA Key picked up a slight knock, so I don't know if he's going to be, you know, giving green light. Woodrow is still out with a knock, so I don't know if he's going to be available. Uh, Carlton Morris has stepped up to Mark, he's, you know, has been putting his centre back after an injury. So, for me, for performance wise, I'm just wanting any player really to step up to Mark. It's going to be hard going to Vance Forest. Because, uh, like I said, under Steve Cooper, we know about him. Are we, you know, Harry brought his swans aside in uh, playoffs and we lost out to him. So I've, I've got a lot of time for Steve Cooper. He's pretty organised. And like I said, um, I think it's going to be an hard game for us. Um, formation side for Barnsley, I think, well, I think it's in lap at God's. So he could go back to a three, but I think he'd be going a 4 3 3 or I don't know, a 4 2 3 1. I'd, I'd, I don't know. And I don't think really Poyer knows some at times. I think he's waiting for a transfer when to up and up because we need some wings in an unbalanced side. Um, I'm hoping that we can fetch some players in just to make a bit of difference to our season to try and rescue it and see what we can do. So are you ready for a transfer window coming up from Knott's Forest and would you want certain areas uh, improving, Dan? I mean, we're looking like we are got um gonna sign Keenan Davis from Villa. Um that one seemed to be mm-hmm. that one seemed to be that like, sort of bubbling up just before kickoff last night na- um last night. And I mean, he would offer that something different up front. No disrespect to Taylor or Graham because they both have different things anyway, but we need someone up front who when it goes to go up front, but when we do go with one, it's like we need someone to hold the ball up. It's like yeah. It's just different way of playing. I mean, I was saying earlier on my channel um, and um, Talk Force TV that uh, we needed someone that can hold the ball up and actually do something different from what Finney and having that plan B can say. Um, I've always said that we need to sort our win backs out because, I mean, Spence being a revelation, we need to get him up permanent and left back seems to be a bit of an issue at the minute for us, so getting a left back in, who can play win back and probably be at that level where Max Lewis or at Spence, it will just really set us up perfectly because you no know, disrespect to Jack Colback, he has done a job at left back. Hmm. Um, I mean, he's been really, really revolutionary since Cooper been in, but it's not a left back for me. It's, we do miss him in that centre midfield, so getting that left back position so it will be a massive, massive uh, thing and even if it's a permanent signing. I've always said as well that we do need an extra winger or two. Yeah, fair enough, I've got Martin, um, 
Johnson, Lonnie, Joe Lonnie just is not at the races at the minute and he, he seems to be injured quite a lot. Mm. So again, in the next ring, with, with that, the pace that like Johnson Martin will benefit for us as well. Yeah, but I mean, like I say, it's good to halfway season, that kind of thing. So as me, as a Bounds fan, I'm hoping I'm doing everything, crossing fingers, and everything. God knows what, hoping that we can have a successful transfer window, either a couple of loans come in, a couple of permits, just to freshen him, and boost up, try and salvage our season, try and stay at championship. Uh, so as Forrest, you're pretty happy with Cooper, uh, a few little ladies you just might need tweaking at. Do you think that um, you could be knocking on the door for playoffs? Do you have it, is your ambition to get in playoffs? Or probably a daft question like, but of course it is. But uh, do you think it's a realistic chance to win playoffs, uh, Dan? If they asked me this start of this, after the start we had to start of the season, I would have said playoffs would have been out the window, personally. Mm. Um, mm. But looking at it now, I mean, a couple months down the line, playoffs were probably a realistic thing now to go for. Um, I'd be happy with like top half, mm. especially with everything we've got after now. But playoffs got to be a realistic aim for for us now because I mean, we wouldn't have gone on the one we had. I mean, we lost three in 19 now, and I mean, that's me enough promotion for me, yeah, for me, it ain't enough. So, realistically, you got to be looking at the playoffs. And I think we it won't be bad on his CV to be fair, Steve Cooper, because when you think about it, it, it you know what it takes to get there. Got Swansea there last season, and it'd be a ma- massive achievement, I think. Me, if he, when he took over Forest, to, you know, when he did to get him into the playoffs, so I don't verge at playoffs. I think it'd be a, a great opportunity for uh, not Forest, but I think uh, even if you just missed out on it, I think it's something else to build on for next season, for such as you said, for confidence for players, wasn't it? Definitely. I mean, I was saying about this the week, I'm kind of going off top a little bit, but um I was only saying that when Sunderland did it a couple of years ago when they were keen, I mean they were bought him after five games or something and yeah. they went up as champions. So anything is can happen in um the championship. I mean, if you win three or four games, you go from relegation to playoffs near enough. And if you lose three or four games, go from top to out of the house. I mean, false proving that anyway, um, um sad we say. Um, but definitely I do agree with that. And it's it'd be an interesting end to the season. Yeah, I think it will be. I mean, um, I think anybody's winnable in championship, it's an hard league because you look at Blackburn and they were going to run and all of a sudden been in third and then West Brom just dropped a few points and they come at you. So, you know what I mean? It's a championship. I think you could be one win away from getting into playoffs or one win away from going to mid-table if it's that tight. It's a championship, isn't it? You know, yeah, so... I mean, the championship, it, don't, everyone says Premier League's the best league in the world. The championship probably is better than Premier League. I mean, fair enough, Premier League got the money, they've got TV rights, got all mm. the best international yeah. place, but it's not as entertaining as the championship because of how it is with, with the winnable games and how tight it is between 6th to 12th or 15th yeah. bottom three, say. Fine margins, isn't it? Fine margins. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, obviously, we covered Barnsley and Knott's for this game. Um, I'm just going to go for score predictions then, uh, Dan. Uh, what, what do you think it, it, the score's going to be on Monday, mate? I think the, it's a tough one to refer to. I think obviously you guys will be wanting to get a win. I think mm. obviously we got half aspirations. So I think I just think it might be probably a 2 0 or 2 1 to Forest to refer. I think 2 1 seemed to be like a bit of a regular mm. theme. <laughs> yeah. But I think, I think it will be a tight game because. All our games at the minute, bar last couple of home games like Preston and that, where we won by three nose, all our games seem to be like one goal in it, which it's tight games. I think it might be more to you want to be fair. Hmm. I'm going, obviously, I, I want to win. I'm going to get a win. We are present form. I don't think it's realistic. I'm, I don't know if I'm doing it from my head or my heart, to be fair, but hmm. uh, I think. 
it could be a draw. I think it could be one one one. Um, I'm hoping that after the Blackburn game, he's got you know pair of midfielders sorted out because that for me were our weakest area. We were just getting possession away too much, and we can't afford to be doing that such against like a, a, you know a Forest team such as you because Steve Cooper will, will be on it straight away and he'll be uh, picking that out as a fault. So obviously, I'd love to win. I, you know, I'd, I'd you know. I could say like two one to Barnsley, but be a risk, be a realistic. I mean, if we come away with one apiece, would it be a result? Not really such, because obviously we wanted points, we wanted three points, and underpaying our for I think six seven games in is like drawn. They haven't won a game yet, so uh, I'm going to say one apiece. Uh, I think it's going to be a tight game. I'm hoping it's entertaining. We never do well under Sky. Sky TV anyway, so I'm not having that much up. So it's one of them, isn't it? Uh, I'm going one apiece. I'm going one apiece, but it is what it is. As long as it's a decent game and a good game, that's all I'm bothered about. Performance-wise, I hope it's a big a big difference. So, yeah, mate, I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, Dan from uh, Talk Forest TV, uh, please check him out. I'll put all the tags and links in my description. Please check him out. Good guy. And all this stuff, passionate about Knott's Forest, like we are about as all teams. Um, yeah, Dan, I'd like to thank you for coming on, mate. Thank, uh, thank you for um, asking me to come on. I mean, it's nice to get talking to other fans and actually getting opinions across. So it's always a pleasure. Brilliant. Uh, and if I don't see you beforehand, um, I want to wish you an happy new year as well. And everybody what's watching, like, subscribe and share. Please check out uh, Talk Forest TV as well, Dan. Good guy. Just one thing left to say. You Reds. <laughs>